A boy opens his eyes and sees several cute maids excited to see him. His totally normal first response is to cast a fireball and incinerate them all, but just before he does so, he realizes that his hands are tiny. That brief moment of distraction throws his aim off, so he misses the maid and instead ends up blowing a hole through the castle walls instead. Fortunately, thanks to the fact that a fireworks show was going on, his blast did not cause a terror alert in the kingdom. The people are celebrating the birth of the new Prince Lloyd while inside the castle, the maids are beginning to consider switching careers before they get turned to ash by this trigger-happy baby. Some time passes and we see that the maids decided to keep their jobs but only after updating their life insurance policy. Right now they are busy looking for the prince and can't find him anywhere, but moments after they leave, Prince Lloyd pops out from behind a pillar. He wants to get as far away from here so they don't find him, but as he was leaving, he ends up bumping into some officials. He asks them not to tell the maids he is here and they agree, but one asks if Lloyd would like to join them for some hunting to pass the time. Unfortunately, he is pretty busy right now so he ignores the offer and just runs off to do his own thing. The official is disheartened that he was rejected by Lloyd again, but the other guy asks why he is even bothering to try making friends with the kid since he is too young to contest for the crown. Plus, he is only the seventh prince, so gaining his friendship won't be politically advantageous. To this, the first official has one thing to say. The kid could blow up a castle on the day he was born and I don't think he needs another reason to stay on friendly terms with him. In fact, it wouldn't be a stretch to say that Lloyd may be the reincarnation of the father of sorcery, but that's only speculation. Back to Lloyd, he is indeed a reincarnation, although he was just a regular sorcerer in his past life. He doesn't know why he remembers his last life, why he is reborn as a prince here, or whose bright idea it was for him to wear this outfit. One thing he does know is that since he has the freedom to do so, he will live the same way he lived in his past life and spend it all researching all kinds of wonderful magic. He is mesmerized by the castle's extensive library collection and thinks it is even better than the one he had access to in his previous life. However, just before he could open a book and start reading, he gets it snatched away by a maid. Silphun has finally found him so he can no longer skip the rest of his lessons as he pleases. Outside, Lloyd now has to go through sword practice with Silpha, and she is showing no mercy against this 8-year-old, but he's still holding his ground. Lloyd doesn't see a reason why he needs to go through with all this training since he is too far down the line to ever have a shot at the royal throne, but Silpha retorts that there is more to life than just trying to gain power in the family. It's only proper that since he is a member of the royal family, that he should be educated in all manners of subjects. She was put in charge of his education three years ago, so she's going to take her job very seriously and make sure he learns stuff. Lloyd doesn't like how insistently diligent Silpha is, but he knows she won't let him skip out on practice until he shows her some improvement. She tells him to get back into stance and the two cross swords once more, however, this time Lloyd is able to match Silpha's moves exactly. She is impressed by the amount of improvement he is exhibiting since she can see that he has gotten better, but Lloyd thinks to himself that he is actually using something called control-type magic to copy her moves exactly. In other words, he's cheating on his swordsmanship exam. However, even with him copying her movements, he's still only got the body of an eight-year-old, so she is stronger, taller, and has more reach than him as well. He's going to have to find a way to make up for the differences, since they put him at a huge disadvantage, so he comes up with a brilliant solution. He's going to cheat some more. He casts a spell to make his wooden sword grow longer, and another one to make him physically stronger, as well as one to make him levitate, so now he is able to fight on equal terms with Silpha. Eventually, when he sees an opening, he switches tactics and stops copying her technique in the middle of his attacks, so she is thrown off guard and he plans to take advantage of that to strike. However, she's still an extremely skilled swordswoman, so she was able to block his strike regardless. She confronts him about cheating just now, and Lloyd is scared that he got caught. She assumes he must have done it to make up for the difference in ability between the two of them. And honestly, she's pretty impressed by it. That means he must have been using two spells at once, and even the palace court mages find that difficult to do so it's a really advanced skill. Lloyd is just happy that she didn't scold him for using magic, but he chooses to leave out the fact that he was actually using four different spells at once instead of just two. Later that evening, it is time for Lloyd to take a bath, but unfortunately, or fortunately depending on how you think about it, he is forced to take his bath while sitting in the lap of Silpha in the maid's bathroom. He finds this whole situation to be incredibly embarrassing, but Silpha refuses to let him leave and bathe himself since last time she did that, he didn't even shower and spent all this time reading instead. 
My guy just wants to read some books, but instead he's surrounded by so many opi that he doesn't know what to do. One of the other maids warns him that if he doesn't behave himself, then he'll be taken by the demon of the forbidden library. Lodi had never heard of this forbidden library or the demon in it, so the girls recount the whole story. Long ago, the kingdom of Saloon was nearly destroyed completely, however, after the sacrifices of countless mages, they managed to seal the demon away inside a book. The name of this demon was Grimoire, and he is supposedly sealed away in the castle's forbidden library. Sylpha doesn't believe the story is true, and she is sure Lloyd wouldn't be scared by something as silly as that. However, Lloyd is fighting his own demons after being surrounded by so many girls in the bath, so he can't bring himself to look them in the eye. They misunderstand this and think he must actually be scared of their story, so they start offering to let him sleep in their beds tonight if he wants to. Lloyd manages to slip away while they argue over who gets to stay with him. And now that he knows there is a forbidden library, he can't just not explore it. That night, Lloyd sneaks through the castle halls until he finds the corridor that should lead to the forbidden library. He then proceeds to cast an air spell on himself to conceal his presence. It changes the density of the air around him and causes light to refract around him, making him practically invisible. One of the guards is falling asleep, but the other tells him to stay awake since they are meant to be guarding magic that could potentially destroy the kingdom in the wrong hands as well as a sealed demon. All the while, Lloyd is walking past them as they talk about how good they are at their guard duty. They are definitely getting fired after this, aren't they? There was still a second layer of protection placed to stop people from getting into the library, though and it is a seal that was cast by ten powerful mages, using their strongest seal in magic, so there should be no way anyone is getting through that. Well, it didn't take much for him to get through it, so I guess the mages are getting fired as well. After Lloyd has made it into the library, he is amazed that despite living here his entire life, he has never once seen this place. He starts looking around at all the interesting books available, but he reminds himself that he has to replace that barrier so people don't lose their jobs because of him. Just then, he sees a book fly out from a pile, and out pops the demon Grimoire. He is impressed that such a young boy managed to break the seal on the door to the library, so he tries to persuade him into unsealing him as well. However, even if he doesn't, the seal on Grimoire is probably just going to collapse on its own since it has degraded over time. Grimoire tries to bribe Lloyd with some gold nuggets, but Lloyd isn't fooled by his words. This gold is made from creation magic, and on top of that, Grimoire made this stuff really poorly. He also tells Grimoire that he'll be redoing that seal once he is done here. The kingdom has a lot of books he can read so he can't let something like Grimoire possibly destroy it all. Grimoire tries convincing him by promising that he won't destroy the kingdom, but Lloyd isn't falling for it. As a last attempt, he says he'll teach Lloyd some ancient magic if he releases him and Lloyd is immediately ready to throw the entire kingdom under the bus if it means he can learn more magic. He asked if Grimoire will really teach him some ancient magic, and realizing he's got the kid hooked, Grimoire tells him that he definitely will. He also tries buttering him up by saying he must be really talented with sorcery. This brings back some painful memories from Lloyd's past life, where he was discarded for his lack of magical talent. But that's changed since he now has the body of a member of the royal family. He creates a magic key and uses it to destroy the book that was holding Grimoire, and once he is free, he can't believe Lloyd actually destroyed the seal just like that. Lloyd is still excited to get his ancient magic lesson from Grimoire, so he asks for the lesson to begin. Grimoire takes a look at him and proceeds to chuck a ball of purple fire at him, calling it Lesson 1. He believes that must have killed Lloyd, so he is about to get out of here and go destroy the world or something. But then Lloyd pops out from the smoke, completely unharmed. Grimoire can believe that Lloyd is still alive after taking a direct hit from his spell, and Lloyd is praising it for being so unique. He would love to see some more, and Grimoire just can't accept that Lloyd survived, so he starts firing off many more spells at him. However, not a single one manages to break through the barrier around Lloyd, so Grimoire is confused how his barrier could be so powerful. Lloyd is watching in amazement as he analyzes the spell, but even though he knows it could possibly kill him, he wants to see what it feels like to take the attack with his body. Lloyd opens up a hole in the barrier and takes a bit of the purple fire in, much to the shock of Grimoire. It burns his finger really badly, but he seems to enjoy it regardless. And this is the moment we find out that Lloyd is seriously messed up in the head. He tells Grimoire to show him something else and not wanting to lose to a child, Grimoire pulls out his trump card and grows his second spell so he can dual cast his magic. And although this would have annihilated anyone who wasn't the main character, Grimoire is getting worse matchups than Jogo did. 
Once Grimoire sees that Lloyd has effortlessly cancelled out his most powerful spell, he gets the message that he cannot handle this kid in a fight, so he tries to get away from him as fast as possible. However, just as he was about to leave, he crashed into the barrier Lloyd had set up around them ahead of time. The castle is right above the library, so he didn't want them finding out he was down here. Grimoire asks if Lloyd thought he was going to try and run away. But that's not it. A long time ago, he made a mistake that raised everyone's life insurance, so he likes to be extra careful when he's using magic. He also put barriers up around all the books so that they wouldn't get burned up. But just when Grimoire was about to try throwing another magic spell, Lloyd stops him and says that he's seen enough of that one already. Now he wants to see what kind of defensive magic Grimoire can use, so he uses one of his own attack spells. It's safe to say that Grimoire is not going to enjoy this, and after the blast has ended, we see him laying on the floor as a defeated demon. Lloyd comes up to him and asks why he didn't use a barrier to defend himself, but nothing Grimoire could do would have saved him from that attack. Afterwards, Lloyd uses some magic to return the room back to normal and Grimoire has been thoroughly tamed from his experience with Lloyd. He tells Lloyd that he is an amazing mage, but Lloyd thinks he is the one who is amazing since it turns out that demons can't be killed by magic, although it still hurts a lot. Lloyd is interested to find out just how much punishment Grimoire can take since he is supposedly immune to magical damage, but Grimoire doesn't want to agree to that. So he pledges his undying loyalty to Lloyd on the condition that he doesn't torture him. Lloyd agrees to take him on as a familiar, but torture will still be involved. Only slightly though. He tells Grimoire to transform so he doesn't scare people with the way he looks, so he turns into this chibi-looking goat and plans to butter him up so he can take control of his body. However, when Grim tries to do so, he ends up staring into the bottomless pit that is Lloyd's mana reserves. This made it clear to him that nothing he tries against this kid will work, so he is better off just being obedient and not causing trouble. With all that settled, Lloyd heads off to enjoy reading in the Forbidden Library as much as he wants. While still enjoying his reading session, Lloyd receives a visitor in the library which Grimm alerts him to. He doesn't think much of it and just tells Grimm to hide since he doesn't want anyone seeing him. But once the man speaks to him, Lloyd perks up because it turns out that it's his big brother Albert. Lloyd accompanies Albert for his daily training so he, as well as a couple servants, all stand around as he gets ready to fire a spell at some targets. Albert casts a little flame spell so he can fire at the target, and while it's just a little one, size isn't all that matters. He uses his spell to strike the target dead center, so everyone gives him a round of applause. Grim asks Lloyd if Albert is really the second prince of the Kingdom of Salom, and Lloyd confirms as much. While he is no main character, he is decently capable physically, as well as being pretty smart, so it's not strange that people consider him a good candidate to succeed the throne. With the authority he possesses, he is allowed access to various facilities within the castle to keep his skills sharp, and sometimes he invites Lloyd to join in. It's one of the few occasions where Lloyd is permitted to cast attack spells within the castle, so he never passes up the opportunity, however, he wants nothing to do with the succession of the throne, so he can't be doing anything too fancy lest he gets dragged into the battle. Lloyd fires all his shots and barely grazes the target each and every time, which makes the brown-nosing noble look down on him for not being able to hit the targets. However, Albert won't be so easily fooled by Lloyd's facade of incompetence. He tells Lloyd that he wants to take a little break, so he is giving him free reign to do whatever he wants on the shooting range while he is gone. Lloyd is excited to get the whole shooting range to himself for once since there are a bunch of new magic spells he would love to try, like the double incantation thing Grimm did when he was fighting Lloyd. Grimm pauses for a moment and tells Lloyd that it's impossible for him to pull that truck off since it's something that only demons can do because they can grow a second mouth. Lloyd realizes he is right, so he comes up with a solution to the problem. He's just gotta absorb Grimm into his body and grow an extra mouth on his hand, no big deal. Grimm is obviously shocked by the series of events that caused him to end up as a 10-year-old boy's hand, but he's just going to accept that Lloyd is crazy enough to try anything once. Since he now has a second mouth, Lloyd is ready to begin double-casting a spell, so he asks Grimm if he'll be able to follow along. Grimm is confident in his spell-casting abilities, so he says he's ready to begin at any time, and they begin casting their spells in sync. However, Grimm quickly realizes that he isn't built for the kind of exploits Lloyd's brain is running on. He asks what the hell Lloyd was just doing, but Lloyd is confused since he was just doing some basic spell stacking. Spell stacking is the process of abbreviating an incantation by adding in several other incantations to shorten the cast time. 
However, what Lloyd was doing was layering hundreds of spells on top of each other at once when normal spell stacking is done, with two or three spells max. Grimm didn't sign up for this, so he backs out of the double casting agreement. And since he doesn't want to do it, Lloyd just decides to handle it himself. He takes over Grimm's mouth and is now able to speak out of both his own and Grimm's, so he begins the double casting again. Grimm doesn't like the idea of having his mouth used against his will, but it's not like he has much of a choice since Lloyd has already begun casting his spell. Lloyd is combining different spells like he's the honored one, and even though he knows damn well that what he's about to do isn't safe, he's got to try this spell out on something. He gets ready to fire it off and simultaneously raise the insurance premiums on the entire castle. The blast is seen all the way over in town, but back with Albert and the brown nosers, they begin asking him why he chooses to give Lloyd so much attention when they don't think he is talented enough to warrant such treatment. Albert tells them that they must be blind to have not noticed the way Lloyd was shooting at the targets. Grazing a target once could be a mistake, but doing the exact same thing ten times in a row, that is a choice. He knows Lloyd is a prodigy and may one day grow up to be a grand sage, so paying attention to him is not wasted effort and could even be of great benefit to him at some point in the future. Although at his core, Albert just wants to get along with his little brother, which is why he let him have the range to himself so he can practice for real. The brown nosers still don't think Lloyd could accomplish much at his age, but as he looks outside, he starts wondering why it's nighttime in the middle of the day. Over at the shooting range, Lloyd has just blown up the sky. That's just something he can do now. But it would cause serious problems for him if the sky just permanently had a hole in it because of him. So he starts freaking out and trying to get it to go back to normal. Thankfully, the sky goes back to normal after a moment so Lloyd thinks everything should be fine. However, by the next day, conspiracy theories have already been made regarding the mysterious hole that appeared in the sky the day before. Lloyd is more intrigued by the other article in the newspaper, so he checks it out and it talks about an A-rank adventurer party that managed to clear a really difficult dungeon and gather treasure including a bunch of magical items. As soon as he saw that, Lloyd decided that it was time for him to head into the dungeon without thinking twice, but Grimm had to pull him back because it's obviously a terrible idea for Lloyd to just disappear from the castle randomly and head off to a dungeon. People are going to go crazy looking for him, but Lloyd has a plan to take care of that as well. He just needs to make them think he is still here, so he pulls out an acorn and casts a plant spell to make a replica of himself from it. Once the spell is complete, a perfect copy of Lloyd's body is formed down to the smallest details, and thanks to the different materials used, it feels the exact same way as regular skin and bone, plus Lloyd can make it move the same way he normally would. Grimm thinks a copy like this might actually allow Lloyd to leave the castle unnoticed, but Lloyd says otherwise, since if this worked perfectly, he would have been using the spell already. The problem here is Sylpha since she is so obsessed with Lloyd that the other day, while he was reading on his bed, she was able to tell that he had grown an extra 0.07 millimeters, which is creepy in its own weird way. Lloyd is sure that he won't be able to fool her with a brain-dead copy like this, but he's got another plan for that, which is where Grimm comes into play. Lloyd slips out of the castle undetected, so as he is flying away, he calls back to Grimm to get a report on how things are going in the castle. Grimm answers, saying he can hear Lloyd loud and clear, as well as get good visuals through one eye, and as far as standing in as Lloyd's replacement, Grimm is pretty sure he is doing alright. At least the regular maids can't seem to tell the difference yet, but he can't get over the fact that Lloyd didn't even hesitate to rip Grimm's soul from his body and put it inside the wooden copy. Then he took Grimm's body and reabsorbed it into his body so they could maintain communication. Since everything seems to be going well, Lloyd tells Grimm to keep pretending to be him but to keep an eye out for Sylpha and avoid her at all costs. Grimm takes some time to admire the craftsmanship of Lloyd because this body is pretty much the same as the real thing, even complete with a monocirculation system. Just then, he realizes that with Lloyd out of the castle, he is free to cause as much mayhem as he wants, but he forgets that he is still on speaker. Lloyd ignores the obviously evil laugh he just heard and tells Grimm that he appreciates the help and is counting on him to keep suspicion down. Grimm is touched by the fact that Lloyd actually trusts him, so tears begin to stream down both of his faces. Lloyd asks if there's something wrong, but Grimm just tells him not to worry about it and to just come back as soon as he is done. However, Lloyd realizes that although he went through all this trouble to get out of the castle without getting noticed, he doesn't actually know where any dungeons are. As he tries to figure out what to do from here, he looks down and notices a girl being chased by a group of orcs, but he decides to watch to see what happens rather than intervening. The girl was running really fast, but don't mistake her running away for weakness because in a split second, 
The girl takes a deep breath and turns around before drop kicking one orc in the stomach so hard that she has to dig herself out of its guts. She then launches herself in the direction of another two orcs which are killed as soon as her kicks connect with their faces. Finally, one more orc tries to get her from behind, but she performs a technique which instantly turns the last one into an assortment of monster parts flying in the sky. She stands victorious over the orc corpses in the most glorious of camera angles and Grimm recognizes that she must be a martial artist, and Lloyd is intrigued to see what she can do since he knows about foreign countries that use energy called Chi to fight. Now that she is done with the orcs, the girl addresses the person hiding over on the mountain, because she noticed that she was being watched. Since he has been spotted, Lloyd wants to head down to talk to her so he can ask her about Chi, but Grimm stops him and points out that it would be really bad if she saw him since he would easily be recognized as the Seventh Prince. Lloyd realizes Grimm is right, so he just chooses not to come out, but that plan backfires because the girl takes the silence to mean whoever is watching her is an enemy. She then proceeds to run up the mountain so Lloyd is panicking since he doesn't want her to find out his true identity. As she lands on top of the mountain, she finds Lloyd who has transformed himself into an older version of himself. He introduces himself as a rookie adventurer named Robert, and the girl is completely starstruck. Lloyd had used illusion magic to change his appearance, but transformation spells are all limited to people whom you have seen before, so in order to hide his identity, he used double casting to combine an illusion of himself with one of Robert, thereby creating a new person which probably still looks like someone from the royal family, but it's the best he could do. The girl introduces herself as Tao and says she's a B-ranked adventurer, so Lloyd and Grimm assume she doesn't suspect anything. The reason Tao suspects nothing is because her brain turned to must after seeing Lloyd. In her 18 years of life, she has never had a boyfriend before, so she left the dojo hoping to meet someone. However, it turns out that most guys don't actually want their head crushed between her thick thighs, so she's been out of luck in the dating market. However, since fate has brought her a hot guy, she will make sure he becomes her boyfriend. Robert tries to get away by saying he wants to go clear a dungeon, but Tao immediately offers to join him so the two head there together. In the dungeon, Tao is killing monsters left and right, all to impress Robert with how strong her thighs are, but he is more interested in the random rocks on the ground than he is in her. They continue through the dungeon and Robert asks why she chooses to adventure alone, so she answers that she hasn't been able to find any good party members due to the lack of candidates in the hot guy category, but Robert fits her criteria perfectly. They sit down to share a meal, so Robert takes the opportunity to ask Tao about the cheese she had used earlier. She is surprised he knows about it since people in this country generally have no idea about anything other than magic. Robert knows it is greatly dependent on the way you breathe, and Tao adds that qi training is entirely based on breathing techniques. It allows you to circulate the qi in your body and reach physical heights that normally wouldn't be possible. Lloyd begins trying to copy what he had seen Tao do earlier, and after just a few moments of practicing, he is able to feel the qi circulating in his body, although he nearly blows up his lungs because his body isn't used to the force. Tao can't believe he was able to copy the technique just by seeing her use it a couple of times, but she warns him that it's really dangerous to attempt this kind of thing if your body hasn't been trained to handle it, however, she has no idea how little Robert cares for his well-being as long as he can learn something interesting from the experiment. Since he seems really set on learning about Chi, she offers to teach him a thing or two since they are together anyway, but once Robert thanks her, her heart skips a beat so she tries to calm down by instructing Robert to keep the Chi breathing up constantly. And the whole time, Grimm is just watching things play out, knowing Tao is getting catfished by a 10-year-old. Grimm enjoys his time by living the relaxed life Lloyd refuses to indulge in, but things take a worrying turn once Silpha shows up. Back to the dungeon, Tao has just used a Chi Blast to defeat the dungeon boss, and now that that's done, the treasure chest precariously placed in the center of the open room unlocks. Robert is intrigued by the mechanism the chest uses to detect whether the wolf has been defeated or not, and Tao is growing even more infatuated with him by the minute, especially since she sees that he is strong enough to learn Chi breathing on his first try, so if she keeps the relationship going, there's no way her grandpa can reject him as her future husband. Robert calls her back over so they can open the chest together, but once it is opened, a slash is aimed right at Tao, which Robert notices in time to drag her out of the way. The slash was caused by the dungeon's hidden boss, the Lich, and Robert is excited to see what it can do. This was the end of episode 2. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to not miss the next part.